New York Yankees fans, yet again, it is Felix from NYNews.com. Like always, all como estas? So there's been reports out there that the Yankees hit up the Oakland A's and attempted to try to trade for Matt Chapman. But, here's the but, they wanted to trade for him to be a stopgap shortstop. Now, how dumb does that sound? They already tried uh, Jill at shortstop, who did great. So, you're going to go, let's just say the Yankees did trade for him. They would go into the season, obviously, you would play spring training games first. But they would go and trade for this guy and put him at shortstop without, you know, him not having experience at that position. Let's not forget to mention this guy is a strikeout machine. He's basically another Joey Gallo who bats right-handed. You know, I'm not trying to take anything away from Matt Chapman. He's defensively great. But it makes absolutely no sense when you got the best shortstop in the major leagues and he's a free agent, and his name is Carlos Correa, who is really good friends with A-Rod, and you, nobody could tell me this. This guy, if you tell him, look, Volpe's ready, we want to give him a shot, this is going to be in what, like three years? Carlos Correa is that type of guy that would move to third base, and his body frame, he, he's just going to bulk up. His power numbers are going to go up, etc. He'll do the move. He'll make that move. Now, the only way Matt Chapman makes sense is if you include Matt Olson with him and you stick him over there at third and you let uh, Gio Oshella play shortstop. Assuming that Glaber Torres is included in that package because where are you going to play DJ LeMahieu? You would have to assume that Glaber Torres is the old man out. You just can't, you know, have a stopgap shortstop and keep playing these games with DJ LeMay here where he's playing all these positions when we know that second base is his best position. That's his natural position. That's where he performs the best. You would have to think the Yankees are going to choose between having Labor Torres or DJ LeMay I could see any team taking DJ LeMay off of uh, the Yankees hands, especially uh, with that contract. I'm not saying his contract is out of this world. But yeah, it's going to offend some Yankees fans. Uh, DJ LeMahieu is basically one of the easiest Yankees to move because teams know what they're getting. They're getting a solid player, uh, a Silver Slugger Award winner, Gold Glove defense. He would be very easy to move. Batting champion, etc. He would be very, very easy to move. So if you're the Yankees and say, huh, where are we going to... Keep, are we going to keep playing this game with DJ LeMahieu where we move him at, to third, second, first? Or are we going to keep Labor Torres, let's say, let, let's hypothetically, let's say they trade with the A's for a Matt Chapman and Matt Olsen. And you move Gio Short and you decide to stick with Labor because Labor is one of those, you know, baby Yankees or whatever. He's not going to cost that much. DJ LeMahieu is making about $15 million dollars per year he's getting up there in age do you make that hard decision let's say okay you trade some of your prospects to the A's you leave DJ LeMahieu and Labor Torres out whatever you choose between those two then you trade LeMahieu to another team and try to recoup on some of those uh, prospects you traded away to Oakland you know that kind of sounds hmm that, that kind of that kind of makes sense if you want to stick with uh, Gleyber Torres and, you know, get a stopgap or whatever the hell the Yankees are trying to do. But what makes more sense is you sign Carlos Correa, keep Gio at third, have DJ LeMay, you play his natural position at second base, and you have a guy like, let's say, uh, Matt Olson at first. Then let's say, I know Volpe is very popular out there. He's a tremendous player. He says the right things. This guy would be a perfect Yankee, but we never know what's going to happen between now and let's say two to three years from now. You do not let a player like Carlos Correa slip through the cracks. You just don't. If he's there for you to sign and you're the New York Yankees, you're loaded with cash, you go out there and sign Carlos Correa. You are a win-now team. You are not a win later team you already tried that 
with Gary Sanchez, Judge, uh, Severino, you know, all these baby Yankees, the time that the Yankees made Alex Rodriguez retired because they were going with that philosophy. The Yankees already tried that. It's time to go back to the evil empire ways. You play in a big market for crying out loud. Do not tell me you can't afford Carlos Correa. And, he, and fans out there, do not tell me that Carlos Correa would not make the move to third base. He absolutely would. It makes perfect sense to sign Carlos Correa. And you ha already have a solid shortstop if something doesn't work out with Volpe, Peraza, Cabrera, etc. You already have your insurance right there. Let's say Volpe's ready. Boom. Carlos Correa moves to third. Gio Urshela by then is already a free agent. It's a win-win common sense thing to do. So long story put short, the Yankees are on crack if they considered Matt Chapman for shortstop. Look, the guy is gifted defensively. Great. The defense is great. We all know that, right? But the guy is a strikeout machine. We do not need more of that on the New York Yankees. And people going out there, these uh, little kids out there saying the average doesn't matter. Look at all these teams that won the World Series. They always have that one player that's hot, high batting average, just a complete player. People that are bashing batting average, you guys keep playing MLB the show, okay? Leave it to uh, old school guys like me. They'll tell you to shut the hell up and you guys don't know what you're talking about. So, Hard pass on Matt Chapman, even if it's to trade for him to play third base. Mm, I'll, I'll only accept that trade if he comes with a Matt Olson. If he comes alone, hard pass. I'll also have a hard pass if he comes with a picture from the A's. The old, like I said, the only way I'll accept the Matt Chapman is if Matt Olson comes along with him. Before I go, I'll leave you guys with this. Hal Steinbrenner. You own the New York Yankees. I know revenue is being split within your family, the Steinbrenner family. You guys are making a good living off of your father's legacy. But you're the New York Yankees, and Carlos Correa is one of these uh, generational players. And you, stop, you need to stop making excuses. He's the best shortstop out there, one of the best or, or the best defensive shortstops out there. Cashman is always preaching about, Oh, we only get the best. If the best is available, we got them. Put your money where your mouth is. Sign Carlos Correa. He'll be your future third baseman in about three seasons. And it's easy peasy. Stop living in the past. We all know G. Michael was the mastermind with all those uh, championships the Yankees won in the 90s. He had confidence in Derek Jeter. Okay, Volpe is a great player. But you can't just roll the dice and say, oh, yeah, kid, uh, shortstop is yours to have. And we're going to get Matt Chapman, who has played shortstop like once. And we're going to put him there until you're ready. Yeah, I, I don't trust Brian Cashman or Hal to have that kind of sense like a G. Michael had. Don't roll the dice. Carlos Correa is there for the taking. And if you guys miss out. You are not a serious franchise. So, Yankees fans, like always, leave your opinions in the comment section below. This has been Felix from NYNews.com. Share, like, and subscribe, and I will check. Share, like.